Alrighty everyone, welcome back. It is now June 15th of 2023. We're just 15 days out from Indiana Jones 5, the Dial of Destiny. Just yesterday, I don't know if you guys have been informed about this, but we did have the Indy 5 world premiere that took place in Hollywood. Mangold was there, Spielberg was actually up front and center on stage introducing all all of the creators and people that took part in the cast such as of course you know people like phoebe waller bridge and harrison ford and others out there but what's interesting is exactly what disney did behind closed doors that really is an act of betrayal against george lucas as a creator and putting a lot of pressure on him and putting him on the spot and we're going to be covering exactly what this means what really happened behind closed doors and how you can actually see signs of this on stage over at the world premiere of indy 5 we're going to be covering every single bit about this so let's get into it this is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future Star Wars updates. I'm also on Twitter at MikeZero1. I thank you all so very much for the great and kind support. And without further ado, let's get right into this. Now, one thing about George Lucas is that he's been very standoffish about Indy 5's marketing. He has been refusing to take part in interviews. He refused to go to the Cannes Film Festival not so long ago. That's why you did not see him. It's no different than how he refused to go to the Episode 9 world premiere, the Rise of Skywalker premiere, because he has a lot of problems with Kathleen Kennedy. He did not support her vision, etc., etc., so what Disney recently did most certainly betrays George Lucas probably in the worst way possible and let's go into it. Now with Disney and Lucasfilm desperately trying to save Indy 5 through last minute marketing boosts requested by Kathleen Kennedy herself as a last ditch effort to boost engagement levels. One thing that Disney recently did that was considered very unfair to George Lucas in a shocking turn of events involves Indy 5's promotion via the world premiere in Hollywood. Now, one big development is that Disney practically twisted George Lucas's arm to appear at the world premiere in Hollywood last night for Indy 5, as they believed it would create a better image for the film's marketing for the creator of Indiana Jones himself of the franchise to be there in person. Since Lucas is now on the payroll with John and Dave, uh, for upcoming Star Wars shows per Disney and Lucasfilm, Disney essentially forced George to attend the premiere going against his initial promise that he wanted to remain absent from it much like the Rise of Skywalker world premiere. George on film at the premiere appeared to be very tired and depressed, barely even cracking a smile or a shred of laughter, like his peers surrounding him like Steven Spielberg and Harrison Ford. Now guys, let me pause here quick for a second. Let's put up some images of the world premiere of Indy 5. And as you can see, George Lucas, he looks so, so unenthusiastic. Like he doesn't want to be there. He's not smiling. He's not laughing. He's hunching. He's looking down. He's got a very sad looking face. I don't know about you guys, but this is very much Mark Hamill vibes with the marketing of The Last Jedi. Almost a near similar type of body language where George Lucas is not cracking a smile, he's not laughing at all, he's not really looking all enthusiastic about the Dial of Destiny's release. And if you look at everybody around him, look at everybody else around him, Kathy Kennedy, James Mangold, Harrison Ford, Spielberg, others, they all appear very happy, they're all smiling, they're laughing at certain points, but George is just there. He's just like there, like, what am I doing here? Well, this is all in relation to what we are talking about, about how Disney behind closed doors practically forced him and put this pressure on him that he was basically the backbone of making it the overall premiere to be a success, essentially, to make it look like a good image for Indiana Jones 5. So let's get into this further because it gets more involved because we do know that Bob Iger played a very big role in getting George on stage and really putting him up there next to Kathleen Kennedy. You can see that he wants nothing to do with her. He's not even glancing at her at one point. So moving on. All right. Now on top of this, Lucas remained very resilient to appearing happy and joyful about the release of Indy 5 and its existence. And this is, of course, all rooted to how Disney put so much pressure on Lucas that it was up to him, all right, that it was all up to him 
to actually appear and to make Indy 5 have a better turnout for its cast and crew that works so hard on the movie. Beforehand, Disney had agreed and respected George Lucas's decision to not appear at the premiere before suddenly delivering so much pressure on Lucas that it was all reliant on him to create a better image for Indy 5's promotion for the Hollywood premiere footage with the cast and the creators, including Kathleen Kennedy. Lucas did, however, refuse to take part in a majority of the interviews for Indy 5, stating, of course, and staying very distant from Kathleen Kennedy besides being on stage. For the most part, he was with his wife separately most of the time. Now, here is the big problem about this. The House of Mouse, as I like to call them, they really try to find any kind of angle, any kind of ulterior motive to get their needs done. And this is by far, I think, the prime example of really trying to boost their image of Indiana Jones 5, kind of making it look like Lucas approves of this movie. Now, we know that Spielberg is a diehard fan of Indiana Jones 5. I mean, he is, like, going all in on this. We got to also remember that Spielberg supports gender swapping of Indiana Jones. He himself even said, I support that. In fact, if you did do that, we would have to call her Indiana Joan. Yes, he literally said that, guys. It's for real. And so that's why you have him on stage, truly, like, just loving this movie, looking so enthusiastic. If you guys have not seen the clip, the Indy 5 clip that took place at Cannes Film Festival, I suggest right now or after this video that you go ahead and look it up. It's going to give you a first-hand glimpse of what this movie feels like, what the tone is going to be like. Not only does it have horrible dialogue, it's got bad CGI at certain points in time, roughly like 38 seconds in, give or take. And it just goes to show you how this literally is like a cut and paste scenario of The Force Awakens, where Helena is like the ray of the Indiana Jones franchise, and basically Indiana Jones is like how Harrison Ford's Han Solo was in The Force Awakens, kind of sidelined and kind of just there, guiding the new character. So anyways, what's interesting about this too is how there is an Indy 5 sequel in the works. Kathleen Kennedy talked about this, we covered this here as well, that they are looking at multiple possibilities of where a sequel could go without Harrison Ford and without Indiana Jones himself, but keeping the Jones legacy alive in spirit to follow the new characters. And that's also another cut and paste scenario of what they're doing with the Ray movie, which by the way got delayed till 2026, is that the legacy of the Skywalkers will follow, but they don't want them to be the main characters. That's basically what they want to do now with this Indy 5 sequel. Look, I don't see how they're going to make a sequel if this movie goes to fail. I really just don't understand that. I don't know why they're doubling down again. With Indiana Jones here, much like how they did with Star Wars in the sequel trilogy with a Ray movie now looming, I don't know why Kathleen Kennedy and those over at Lucasfilm have been doubling down. This is exactly what John and Dave are trying to fight against. So anyways, guys, you know, drop a comment below. Fill me in below what you all have to say about this. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel, and I will catch you guys next time.